Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Well, today is the day. If you were watching this video on the day that I released it, uh, it's, it's the day. The day that the whole country is a buzz about. It's election day, right? And like I said in yesterday's video, we're probably all tired of it. Uh, comments from yesterday's video, some of you were saying, just get it on. You know, regardless of what's going to happen, it doesn't matter at this point who wins, what happens in the aftermath, it, you know, the suspense is, is worse than anything. Just kind of let it happen. And I understand that sentiment. Um, I know some of you might say, well, if you just, you know, whatever, there's, there could be people's lives that could be endangered uh, by hoping that it would just... Uh, whatever chaos is going to happen, happen. And that's not exactly what I meant. Um, but it, it, it's going to be, it's going to happen what's going to happen. It is what it is, right? It is what it is. What's meant to be will be. Uh, and then we will have to uh, deal with whatever happens, right? Whatever, whatever the outcome, uh, no matter who wins, no matter uh, what happens because of the whole election process, what, uh, you know, violence, what protests, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, one thing to keep in mind is even if the, tr the president, Trump, does not get reelected, he's still president for like two and a half months. Uh, there's still a lot of things that, that he could, could do or take on or, you know, powers that he could use depending on what happens. But... That's not really the topic of today. Um, today, I just, I don't know where I want to go with this. We've got a, this is one of those days, just a lot of random thoughts and random ideas. And, and I thought that maybe since it's the big election day, and, and some of you, some of you don't care, because <laughs> you tell me that. Uh, some of you do, and some of you will be glued to your TV or internet or radio or phone or whatever it is uh, to try to get a heads up on what's going on. Uh, and for those of you that don't care, those of you that aren't going to be watching any of it, uh, I want to encourage you to go over to my friend's channel. <laughs> this is not any kind of sales pitch because it's free. I don't make any money and it's free for them. Uh, but they have a YouTube channel. And I'll leave a link below in the description. And they take old classic black and white movies from 30s, 40s, 50s, and they uh, digitize them, clean them up, and they um, colorize them. And they put them up on YouTube for you to watch for free. So then they've put a bunch of good stuff. John Wayne, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, I can't even think of all of them now. <laughs> My mind is drawing a blink to all the ones that they've put up. Anyways, there'll be a link in the description. And it's some good, good way to, good, clean, wholesome way to pass the time uh, before the great apocalypse of 2020, right? But honestly and seriously... Um, you know, there's just, I've been doing a lot of thinking about all the things that's happened in 2020. And we, we you know, it's this, all, everything's hype, 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 and all this fear and, and doom and gloom. And, and it's easy, even for those of us that are kind of, we kind of know in a, in a way, manner of speaking what's going on. We, we get it. We get that there's a, a, a little motive behind all this, that there's some orchestration going on. We, we get it. But even for us, at times, we kind of forget that what's happening is, is much of it is happening because of a plan that's being played out. And, and we're just the pawns. We're the, the, the stooges, basically, the little, uh, the little gerbils, <laughs> so to speak, or at least in their mind we are. And so we always have to remember that. Um, whether you know this or not, or whether you believe it or not, I believe this to be true, um, that there are powerful people that kind of uh, oversee things. Maybe there really is this new world order. Maybe it's just people in powerful positions uh, using that power to try to move things along in certain directions uh, that they, as they see fit. However you want to look at it, um, that is what's going on. And one of the objectives, I believe, from them, because there's too much evidence to point any other direction, is, is they want to divide us. 
they want us to be dependent on them uh, and they want us to to also not like each other they don't like independent people and they don't like people that get along they don't like people that that look past their differences and, and see that uh, in the end everyone on this planet shares far more things in common than we do in with things that we don't have in common and they don't like that and so they're going to do everything they can um, to divide and conquer this has been a, a tactic that's been around for many many years many decades many centuries um, that to go in and divide your enemy it's a tactic used militarily if you're taking on a, an opposing force uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to divide that force up uh, because once you know that it's divided it, it weakens it uh, and they we do that in a, a psychological warfare type of way uh, to to divide people divide people by race divide people by uh, you know, economic classes, uh, divide people uh, religiously, uh, and, and get people to the point that they absolutely despise each other, that they're, they're so busy fighting each other um, that they actually forget and stop realizing who it is in the end that's caused it all. Um, there's there's a, something that you may have heard and you can look this up if you don't believe me. I encourage you to always look things up that I tell you. That way you know for certain that it's the truth. Um, but if you take red ants, like fire ants, and you put them in a glass jar, and you take a black ant, you know, a big old huge army ant, and you stick in that, uh, that glass jar with them, and let that jar just sit there, they will just go about their own business. They won't really bother each other. But if you take that glass jar full of those ants, and you start shaking it and shaking it and shaking it uh, violently, you know what happens? Those ants start attacking each other, and they'll kill the black ant. They will rip it to shreds. Um, why? Because someone has agitated them. Uh, in the beginning, they weren't agitated. In the beginning, they had no reason to hate each other. They had no reason to attack, to kill, to destroy. They were just going about their business just fine until someone came along and used their greater force, their greater energy, their greater power, and they agitated all of them. And now, for an unknown reason, they hate the other one, and they want to attack them, and they want to kill them. And that is what's really going on, I believe, in the world today. I think in the end, a lot of the reasons why people don't like the opposing side is because it's what they're told to believe. And I know many of you can say, yeah, but I don't like liberals because of this, this, and this, and this. And of course, conser uh, liberals would say the same thing about you. They'd say, well, I don't like those right-wing conservative constitutionalists because of this, this, and this, and this. I understand. <clears throat> and those are legitimate things. But in the end, the constant drumbeat of conservatives are bad because they want this. Liberals are bad because they want this. White people are bad because they do this. Black people are bad because they do this. Christians are bad because they do this. Jews are bad. Muslims are bad. Buddhists are bad. Rich people are bad. Poor people are bad. On and on and on. People that eat meat. People that don't eat meat. People that live in the city. People that live in the country. The North, the Northerners are horrible. Southerners are ridiculous. It's on and on and on. You get the point? <clears throat> that is what our society has become, this constant inundation of divide and conquer, labeling everyone. Everyone has to have a label now. I mean, it's to the point that there's, you know, I don't even get it. I guess I'm getting old, but this, you know, pronouns or whatever, she, her, they, them, it, whatever it is, everyone has a, is labeling themselves. And that's the thing. We've, we've, it's happened so long that now we're, we're not accepting labels given to us. We're putting labels on ourselves. And what that does is, is it creates a divide amongst ourselves. We have been so conditioned as a people, not necessarily you and I, but sometimes you and I, but the people as a whole have been so conditioned to, to label ourselves, put ourselves in a little box, and point out the differences between each other that we're doing it to ourselves now. We don't even have to wait for them to give us our, our, our 
label for the the powers that be to tell us that you're poor, you're rich, you're you're black, you're white, you're you're this, you're that. We we're labeling ourselves. And what we're seeing is is the results of it. We're seeing a a nation and really a world that is becoming more fractured. Um, you know, I've said before, and then, you know, every time I mention masks, there's always someone that wants to defend them. And I want to I want to point it out just real quick. I'm not opposed at all to wearing a mask. If you want to wear a mask, if you feel that it's best for you, that's your business. I don't care. Um, if I lived in an area that had a lot of, you know, cases, I might wear one myself or if I had to go to a place. I don't, so I don't wear a mask. That's your choice. But the point is that the constant wearing of the mask, the constant social distancing, not shaking hands, not going to uh, family gatherings, not going to church, all the things that for really throughout human history has brought us together and bonded us together in a community. Our religious beliefs, close-knit family, uh, physical contact, shaking of hands, hugging, um, seeing the expression, human expression. There's, there's all kinds of studies, psychological studies, on, on how the, the human mind recognizes various facial expressions. All of that is being deleted. It's just it's being removed from us. And uh, whether or not you want to argue that it's healthy, physically healthy or not, or that it helps protect you or not, the point is, is it's dehumanizing us. Um, and I think that it's, it goes right along with everything else that we have been seeing recently uh, and in the recent past, uh, the last few decades. It's just been this constant building, building, building in that direction. Um, and many of you might say, well, what, what can we do about it? Uh, what, what can we do to stop it? And my opinion is, is we have to resist. Passive resistance sometimes is more powerful than, than violent resistance. Um, one thing for sure that I believe of all the, the selection, um, and whether you like Trump or not, and I know my listeners are kind of divided. Some of you like Trump, and some of you just don't like either candidate, uh, and that's fine. But I believe that there is one thing that I can absolutely, I'm not saying he hasn't done other things, but there's one thing that I can absolutely pinpoint that I do think that the president has done, and that he has fired up your typical American, just your average American. And I'm not even going to say you're conservative American or the silent majority right-wing Americans. I'm just talking about your average American. Most of what we're seeing of uh, just the outspokenness against him is typically on the left. But I'm talking about just your run-of-the-mill, regular old, red-blooded American that in the past may have voted but, you know, really wasn't that involved. Uh, because they believed that America was strong and that regardless of what America went through, she would always prevail. And what they're seeing is that America is not quite, the, has the strength that they thought it did. That America can be brought down. That there are people in this country that are hell-bent on destroying not just the nation from a political and government uh, standpoint, but actually destroying and, and, and completely wiping away the moral fabric uh, that this nation was built upon. And I know that this country has, over the two and a half centuries it's existed, it's, it's done a lot of bad things. There's a lot of things it's done that it should not be proud of. There's also some good things. And if nothing else, the, the, whole, the ideals that this country was founded on and that the people that have lived and built and spread across this nation has believed that, that ideal of, of freedom, of individuality, of respect, of morality, of not being told what to do, of <clears throat> taking care of each other, of understanding that there is definite right and that there's definite wrong. Uh, realizing that that 
just unchecked and unfettered fettered immorality can lead us to a, a very dark place as a people. That there should be some kind of moral foundation, some, some kind of moral fabric that holds the people together. Those things, along with many others, is what really had built this nation into what it is. And people that believed that that would always exist are now seeing that those very foundation, foundational principles are in jeopardy and could easily be destroyed in actually quite a quick amount of time. Not over generations, but over just months or at the most a few years. And so I think the best thing that's happened with this administration is that there has been an enlightened or lightening of the fire. And so while there is certainly a lot of things to be concerned with in this world, um, a great reset uh, that will, if it completes, if it's completed, it will vastly change everything that we know, resetting economies, resetting um, the food industry, the food uh, systems, resetting everything. There's a lot out there, and I'm fully convinced over the last several months that the agenda of um, more of a global community and the agenda of, uh, of those in power that they want to, you know, basically completely take over, uh, I believe that it's, it's in full force. But I also believe that there are more and more people that are starting to wake up and realize that uh, we cannot tolerate this. And so regarding, regardless of what happens this evening or the coming days or coming weeks with this election, uh, regardless of who wins, uh, and really regardless of what violence may ensue because of the election, those of you that I'm speaking to right now, if you can hear my voice, and you know that, that these ideals that I'm speaking of uh, must not be destroyed and must not die away. They, we must pass them on to our children. We, we must continue them. Um, if you hear that and you agree with that, then you are obligated. You really are obligated to, to continue those things and to resist this, this domination, resist this, this new world order, this, this new age, this... Um, reset of everything that, that, that we have ever known. And, and know that if enough of us, and I believe there are enough, uh, stand together and do this, then, then there is a chance. There's a chance that, that we can prevail over this. Um, I believe in my heart, and maybe I'm just way too optimistic, I believe that there are enough good people left in this country to, to take a stand. I meet them all the time. I hear from them every day. My, e my email inbox is just every day. It's overflowing. And for those of you that keep asking, uh, you know, do you respond? Yes, I respond to emails. But brother and sister, I'm telling you, uh, when you're starting to get 100 and 200 emails a day and you're still trying to run a, a homestead, uh, it, it starts to slow you down. But I will get to them as I can. But I hear from you, and I hear that there are enough of you that you're not going to take this line down. You're not going to just roll over and play dead. You're not going to allow the, the, the corporate uh, leaders and the, the, the central bankers and the, uh, the globalists to win, no matter what. I would rather die with my boots on, standing in my, you know, on my feet, than to, to live on my knees. And I think many of you feel the same way. So <clears throat> regardless of, again, of what happens today, what happens this evening, what happens over the coming weeks, um, that moral fabric that made us a great nation, that made us a great people, that instilled that pride that other people around the world for the last two centuries have have 
done everything they can to come here to live because they want part of that. They want to taste it. They want to see it. They want to be it. That can still exist. And regardless of where this country goes, regardless of if it, if it stops being a country anymore, those beliefs, those morals, those principal foundations that make us a good people, they don't have to go away. Um, we Goodness in the end can still win, and I believe it will win because I've read the end of the book. So do not become disheartened regardless of what happens tonight tomorrow, whenever, whenever you're watching this. Maybe it's already happened if you're watching this in the future. <laughs> um, you and I, we can't just give up. Um, there are people out there that want to rule, and the best way to keep them from ruling is to just not, not allow them. I know, it's so simple, isn't it? Uh, but passive resistance does work, and... If that doesn't work, we always have to be ready to when they take it to the next level. All right, guys and gals. <laughs> Maybe eventually we can get on and start talking about things not that's not involved in the election. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, there's links in the description below. Uh, things you can get a hold of me for. If you need to, looking for certain items, there's great links to some great products. Um, uh, you can purchase through them. You don't have to. I still like you if you don't. I'll catch you in the next video.